Using ChatGPT for writing essays might save you time but could cost you cognitive development. Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra. MIT's Media Lab released the preprint of a new paper that found that people using ChatGPT for their essays had less brain connectivity, used their alpha and beta networks less, and had lower memory when compared to users who did not use ChatGPT. The paper is not yet peer reviewed, which means that it hasn't been published in a journal and hasn't been edited by other academics. But the authors wanted to release the findings immediately because they felt that it was an issue that was affecting children everywhere right now. Basically, a group of researchers at MIT conducted an essay writing experiment with 54 participants. They divided them into three groups those who could use AI tools like ChatGPT those who could use search engines like Google, and those who could only use their brains while writing essays. They did this over three different sessions with the same assignments for the three different groups to understand what kind of tool helps produce what kind of essays. And in the final session, they asked the group that was using AI to write an article using just their brain and asked those using just their brains to now use AI to test how their brains had adapted over the last few sessions. And throughout the sessions, they conducted electroencephalograms or EEG tests of these participants to find that those that were using AI had significantly lowered cognitive performance as compared to those that used their brains. The study saw that whenever a topic like um, philanthropy, art, loyalty was given to these participants for writing an essay, the kind of essays that was produced by those using just their brains showed a lot of heterogeneity, leading to a variety of different essays. The LLM group, on the other hand, produced very similar essays using similar keywords also. The EEGs helped show the difference between how each participant's brain worked with external support like search engines and LLMs and without. One of the interesting things that the paper noted was for the people that were using search engines, the parts of their brain that react to visual cues and process visual information was quite active. It's because they were using a screen to get information and they had to make sense of it. But the same parts of the brain were not activated in people using LLMs because they didn't even need to interact with the screen for too long. LLMs like ChatGPT give information in a ready-made manner, which reduces brain activity even more. Beyond that, the paper also attempted to see if these underlying changes in brain activity were also visible in the behavior of the participants. So they conducted interviews with the participants about their essays and they found that those that were using just their brains could quote from and recall their essays much better than those who used ChatGPT. The paper did admit that their sample size is quite small since they only conducted it in a small group of people aged between 18 to 39 in the Boston area of US. The paper said that future studies would need to involve a wider group of participants, but given the fast adoption of AI in learning and in teaching, the need for studies like this to study neurocognitive development is very important. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into the print.